you, Jesus. We just worship you in this place. We lift you high. You are higher and greater and bigger than anything. Hallelujah.
Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence.
Welcome to Freedom Chapel. If you're a first time guest, we'd love to welcome you this morning. We hope you've already signed in at the Welcome Center, but if you have not, you still can for a free gift. Raise your hand and an usher will give you a card. You can also fill out a card at the Welcome Center or register using the QR code with your phone. Please make sure to stop by the Welcome Center to get your free gift. As we move closer towards February, please keep in mind that the cafe and all children's ministries will be closed until February 6th. Wednesday night Bible study will be taking place on live stream for the rest of January and the 2nd of February as the church will be closed. Make sure you tune in with us on live stream in our YouTube channel. If you or somebody you know is in the process of mourning the death of a family member or a friend or in need of love and support, we encourage you to come out and join our grief share groups on Wednesdays starting January 19th from 7 to 9 p.m. Please visit the Welcome Center for more information. Attention parents, the Raw Rangers Merit Camp will be taking place Friday, February 18th and Saturday, February 19th. You can find the registration forms at the Welcome Center. The cost is $35 before January 31st. After said date, the cost will be $50. Please see Commander Eddie for more details. The 21 day fast is underway. We will go through this time of seeking the Lord from today, the 16th through February 5th. Make sure to pick up your fast journal and pamphlet in the lobby. The cost is $10. We'll be live streaming every evening during the fast for a time of devotion from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Make sure to tune in. We have a lot of events approaching us this coming month, from believers class to water baptisms and even baby dedications. If you are interested in any of these events that are coming up in February, please stop by the Welcome Center for more information. Before we send it back to the podium, we have four ways to give. You can donate in person at the red boxes in the lobby by using the envelopes that are in the seat in front of you. You can also mail your gifts to our address on the screen. If you'd like to give online through our website, search freedomchapelny.org, click give and select our church. You can also give by texting the word give to the number on the screen. Thanks for tuning in with us, Freedom. See you all next Sunday. Well, good morning, and I hope you're enjoying your, your time at home as we have gone, as we're going through the service live uh, from the church. Today is day 15, day 15 of our 21 days of fasting and praying. And I want to encourage you, as you've heard the announcements this morning, I want to encourage you to keep pressing on. This is the final week. This is when they say in sports, leave everything on the field. Don't lose. Don't give up. And don't give in now. You're about a week away from fulfilling your 21 days of fasting and praying. And I believe that this next week is going to be a bountiful week where you will start to tap in and see what God is doing in your life. And so I want to encourage you, clearer vision, clearer dreams, clearer understanding and revelation. And so continue to press in uh, in these last week as we continue to complete our 21 days of fasting and praying. Just a couple of announcements we want to add to the announcements that you just heard just now. On Sunday, February the 20th, will be our annual business meeting. Annual business meeting. On February, Sunday, February the 20th, will be our annual business meeting, and it will be right after the regular worship service on that Sunday morning. So if you are a member, make sure you check up and make sure your membership is up to date. And if you have any questions, make sure you call the office and Kathy and Adrian will be able to uh, answer any question uh, you may have. Just to emphasize, because we're not here in person this Sunday, uh, the Believers class starts next Sunday. So if you signed up for the Believers class or you want to be in the Believers class, make sure that sometime during this week that you stop by and pick up your book, or when you come in next week, uh, Sunday, you can pick up your book. The cost of the book is $10. And the Believers class starts next Sunday at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. The, believe, be, the Believers class will go from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then you can go get a cup of coffee and come back and, and come into the service at 10.30. So if you sign up for the Believers class or if you didn't sign up, make sure you're here early next Sunday at 9 a.m. We'll show you one of the classrooms where the class will be taught. The newcomers reception, we sent out some invitations this week for the newcomers reception. You may have been here for the last six months, 
and you may have liked what you've seen. You want to know more about it and more about the vision and the direction in which we're going. So I want to encourage you, you receive an email uh, or a text message, make sure you RSVP. It is so important that you RSVP so that we can estimate how many people will be there so that we have enough food to be able to feed everyone uh, that's coming. And that's the, the Sunday after the fast. So a lot of people will be hungry. So if you are coming to the newcomers reception, if you didn't get an email or a text, but you want to come to the new, uh, newcomers reception, make sure you either send an email to the office or call the office and let us know that you're coming and we'll be prepared uh, when you come. Uh, also, I want you to remember when you come on Sunday, next, uh, this coming or next Sunday, Make sure you sign up for the membership class. If you are interested in becoming a member here at Freedom Chapel, make sure you come and sign up for the membership class. With that, the following Sunday, which is the 13th, there will be a water baptism. So please, if you want to be water baptized, you haven't been water baptized, that's one of the requirements for membership as well, that you get water baptized because you are a Christian. There will be a water baptism class on the 13th of February uh, from 9 to 10, and then the water baptism will probably be in the service or after the service. We'll let you know more about that uh, next week. And then baby dedications, as we say, are always the second, I believe the second, uh, no, the third Sunday of every month, third Sunday of every month. So if you ever have a baby that you want to dedicate, uh, make sure you call the office for the third Sunday of, of each month. Well, let's pray. We're going to pray for the offering this morning. Uh, and people have asked me, well, Pastor, we haven't, we're not there to be able to give our offerings. No, we trust you that next week you'll bring it. You won't go home and eat it because why? You want to use that seed to sow into the kingdom so that God can continue to meet every need in your life. So let's pray for the offering this morning. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the offering. I thank you for those that are giving in person or online. I thank you that even though we are not here, our people are continuously faithful in their giving. And so we thank you for our tithes and offering. We thank you, Lord, that it is a spiritual thing that you have given us to do to exercise our faith in you. And so as we give this morning, may everything we say and everything that we do bring glory to your name. Have your way and bless our giving. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And everyone said, amen. Well, it's so good that uh, we were able to do this and record this morning, and we know this is day 15 of the, the tie, uh, of day 15 of the fast, and we want to encourage you. It has been excellent. Now, some of you have testimonies. Some of you have, have stories of how God is already speaking to you. And when I, I want to encourage you, send me an email. My email address is hdennis at freedomny.net, N-E-T. I'm going to have the guys probably put it on the screen for you as well. hdennis at freedomny.net. If you have a testimony or a story of what God has done for you in these 21 days, make sure you send them in this week, especially this week, because next week in the sermon, I want to be able to share one or two of those stories of what God has been doing in our midst in the last 21 days. And so I want to encourage you, go ahead and send us an email there so that we can share what God is doing and bless other people because faith arises when people can hear of the goodness of God even in this day. All right, let's, let's go into our sermon this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, and as we always say every Sunday morning, and now that you're home, Make sure you have your Bible. Make sure you have your Bible, your notebook, and, 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 and your pen ready to engage and find out what God is saying to us this morning through the Word. Daniel chapter 3, I want you to open up to verse 19. We will get there in a minute. That is our main scripture uh, for this morning. But last week in part one of our, of our sermon, Enduring Faith, we talked about uh, there are some things that you and I have to overcome to be able to walk in enduring faith. We said last week that if you and I are to have or walk in enduring faith, we must overcome, number one, the threat of conforming. Number two, the challenge or the challenges of our minds. And number three, the fear of losing one's life, death. 
Do you understand me? And that's what we talked about. And if you didn't hear that sermon last week, go back into YouTube and look at the sermon from last week, part one of Enduring Faith. And it is just we are going to build upon that this morning as we go into part two, part two of Enduring Faith uh, this morning. Last week, we defined endurance. You remember when we were talking about that in this time that we're living in, you and I must have endurance. We must have the ability to endure and persist and never give up. We defined endurance last week as the ability to endure unpleasant or difficult processes or situations without giving way. Let me, def- let me read that again. Endurance. Endurance we defined last week as the ability to endure an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. Are you someone that likes to quit? Are you someone that is easy to give up? No, in our days, you and I need to have some backbone and some courage to be able to recognize that God is looking for men and women of God that are warriors in the kingdom of God that will never quit and never give up, even if that means going home to be with Jesus. Right? We talked about last week in Hebrews 11 that all those that did not receive the promise believed unto death. And that is the mark of a Christian. And that is a mark of, of someone that is walking by faith and not by sight. We never, ever give up. And then I wrote in my notes for this week, I said, every faith must be put through the cleansing fire of the Holy Spirit. If you have faith and you believe you have faith, our faith will be tested. It will be tested by the enemy. It will be tested by people. Are you ready for this one? It will be tested by God. For, for, so God can be able to show us what kind of faith that we really do have, right? And so I wrote that in my notes, every faith must be put through the cleansing fire of the Holy Spirit. And then I wrote, fire has a way of burning away everything that is fake, artificial, and an imitation of the real thing. I got to say that again. Faith. When faith is put through the fire, fire has the ability to burn away anything that is fake, anything that is artificial, and anything that imitates the real thing. You don't know what your faith level is until you come face to face with a giant, and now you have to exercise your faith. Do you have imitation of faith? Uh, do, you, uh, do you borrow your parents' faith? Or do you borrow someone that you admire in the kingdom of God or in the church? If you don't have your own faith and, and you're trying to imitate someone else, a trial will expose you. And that's why we want to encourage you to get into the Word, get into this thing and meditate and grow your faith and allow God to move in your life so that you have your own story of the faithfulness of God. If you get your own story of the faithfulness of God, nothing will move you. All right? So let's continue. And and, and so there's this couple of scriptures that I got here in, in my notes that the children of Israel understood the process of going through the fire. I want you to turn in your Bibles, put, keep your hand in Daniel. We'll come back to Daniel in a minute. But I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Go ahead. You're at home. Go, go make sure you find that scripture. It is so important that you find it, and we'll wait on you. We're patient like that. We want you to make sure that you find the word. And when you find it and we read the verse, highlight it. Highlight it so it gets down into your spirit. But the children of Israel were used to going through difficult times. Uh, 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 The prophet Isaiah in chapter 43, verse 2, writes this. Isaiah writes, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Let me read that again. I love that scripture. Isaiah, uh, uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 2. Isaiah writes, when you pass through the waters. Lift your head up one minute. Look at me. Notice it didn't say when you go around the waters. It says when you pass 
through the waters. Listen to me carefully, man of God, woman of God, Christian. You and I have to learn that there are some times that God will not allow us to go around things. He wants us to go through things. We used to sing that song of old, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. When you go through a trial, you learn how to depend on God. If you go around the trial, you will never grow in your faith and your trust and your ability to trust God. Isaiah says he's not talking about those that want to go around a storm or those who want to go around a trial. No, he's looking for men and women of God that are bold and courageous that will go through the storm. Why? Because they trust that God will be there in the midst of that storm. Isaiah 43 verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire... The children of Israel knew that there were going to be times in their lives that they would have to walk through fire. Listen to me carefully, man and woman of God. Don't let anyone fool you to think that the Christian life is always going to be easy and a rose of, of, of a rose bed. Do you understand? Sometimes it requires toughness. Sometimes it doesn't go our way all the time. Do you understand me? And he says to them, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. All right? Another scripture that I liked is in Malachi, Old Testament. This is the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi. I want you to turn to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I love this one as well. Uh, let's start from verse 2. Well, let's start from verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. Malachi chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse, starting from verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. All that is prophetic, to, uh, pointing towards Christ. And John the Baptist. And then we pick it up in verse 2. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like laundry is soap. Verse 3. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. When God comes, he allows the fire of God to come into our life to do what? To refine us, to purify us like pure gold, like pure gold. And so the children of Israel had no delusion that sometimes God would walk them through fire. So that they will become the people of God that God intended them to be. What kind of fire are we, we talking about? We are co- this kind of fire is called the refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. And sometimes through your Christian walk, God will place each one of us through the refiner's fire. Because that's where our faith is tested. That's where our faith comes to the place where we can be able to say, is our faith genuine or is it a fake? And there's too many Christians walking around with fake faith, thinking that they're trusting God. But when push comes to shove, when the rubber meets the road, when the elephant stumbles on the ground, I don't know why I said that one, the reality of it, your faith collapses. And so I want to encourage you as as we go through, there will be a refiner's fire. Go through it because God is purifying us to be the men and women of God that he wants us to be. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 3. So back to Daniel Daniel chapter 3. Let me just get that in. in, Here we go. Daniel chapter 3. Uh, Let's pick it up from verse 19. Daniel chapter 3, verse 19. We we read last week that Nebuchadnezzar had built this idol. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to worship the idol or any of his gods. And, Nebuch- and they just said to Nebuchadnezzar, we fully expect God, our God, to deliver us. And then they, they said this magnificent, those, these magnificent words, even if our God doesn't. In other words, even if he doesn't show up, even if he doesn't deliver, uh, deliver us, they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow down and worship your idol, and we will not worship your gods. You talk about boldness. You talk about courageous. You talk about people that are sold out in their faith and trust with God. They were absolutely convinced that they will not bow their knees to any other God. Are you convinced? Do you know enough of the word that is in you that you can be able to say without a shadow of a doubt, there is nothing that the enemy can give me. There is nothing that this world can throw at me. There is nothing that I may even lose that will make me bow my knees to a different God. Do you understand me? But let let me just say this. With every decision you make for God, with every decision you make for God, there are consequences. Just because you make a faith statement doesn't mean God is going to deliver you. Doesn't mean God is going to rescue you. We found that out last week in Hebrews chapter 11 at the end, of, at the end part of chapter 11. You and I need to stand in faith regardless of what the results are in this life. Because we learned last week that the sovereign plan of God will always be right. In other words, God's plan for our lives, even when we don't understand it, is always the right plan for our lives. And so Nebuchadnezzar now is going to react to what what, um, what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said in the first part of the chapter. So let's pick it up in verse 19, Daniel chapter 3, verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face, his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace." Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and other garments, and were cast in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because, uh, verse 22, therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the, the, furnace was, uh, the furnace exceedingly hot, and the flames of the fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. I wrote in my notes here, when God is building enduring faith within you, things will always get worse before they get better. Just because you, you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior and you've come into the kingdom, don't think, hallelujah, I'm good, I'm saved, I'm protected, nobody's going to hurt me, I'm coming to the church, all these lovely people at church, they're going to smile with me, they're going to pray with me, they're going to encourage me. Some of your deepest hurts will happen in church. Oh, Jesus. Let me say that again. Some of your deepest hurts will happen in church. Why? Because we are an imperfect people. Imperfect people. We are all trying to walk the walk of sanctification and become like Jesus, but it is a life journey. And that's why we need to give grace to one another when we miss each other, when we make a mistake, and we do things that we shouldn't. There should be grace applied, because why? We are still a work in progress. All right? And so I wrote down here, when when God is building enduring faith within you, things will always seem to get worse before they get better. How did it get worse for for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Number one, first, the furnace was heated up seven times greater. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar, when he was going to be finished with these guys, he didn't want to see a, an inch or an ash left from these people's bodies. He wanted to make sure that we incinerated these guys for the audacity they had to challenge me. He was so angry that he told his guards, turn up the furnace 
seven times greater. That's what we just said. Before things get better, they usually get worse. Why? The enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants to, and if you haven't been taught properly and your theology is not correct, he will make you feel, well, I, it is far worse now that I'm a, than I'm a Christian than before I was a Christian. And you and I need to understand, before you became a Christian, you were on your merry way to hell. The moment you accepted Christ as, as, as Lord and Savior, now you're on your merry way to heaven. And no amount of riches and wealth and, 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 and whatever it may be, it's enough for you and I to give up our souls and end up in hell. Do you understand me? I always say to people, if you're going through hell right now, go through it. Because you don't want to go through hell again, which is permanent. All right? And so the first thing that happened that turned worse was that the furnace was, was lit up seven times hotter than normal. Number two, he then had them bound with no way to escape. I mean, these guys weren't going anywhere. These guys, remember what we said last week, you, they couldn't change their mind. and say, oh, oh, so, sorry, because I didn't know you really were going to kill us, but I changed my mind. There was no way and no time to change your mind. Nebuchadnezzar makes sure he got the strongest guys in his army, and they bind these guys. They were not going anywhere, right? And then, and then what made me laugh when I, when I was reading this passage, they said he fully clothed them. I mean, this guy must have been so angry that anything that was flammable, anything that could catch on fire right away and disintegrate them, he made sure he put clothes on them, all their clothes on them. Why? So that the fire will, keep, will kind of lap, lap out at them and, and be able to accelerate them as quickly as possible. So he says they are fully clothed with all their earthly belongings. Mm. Refined as fire. Remember that. The fire, they were going into the fire with all they had. All they had. Let me ask this question. Do you trust that everything you have is sufficient to save you? Or are you, are you relying on Jesus for your salvation? There are so many people that are relying on things that are around them. They're relying on houses and cars and money and 401ks and all these things. That they're relying on having to go to uh, great vacations and do this, all this other thing. And they're relying on all that to bail them out at the end, and we already know what the Bible says. The only thing that will last when everything is over is what you have done for Christ and whether you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do you understand me? But he made sure that all their belongings were on them. The fourth thing we notice here is that even your enemies, I wrote here, even your enemies that are trying to destroy you, they themselves were being destroyed. What, what do I mean by that? Nebuchadnezzar, if you, if you look at um, verse 22, verse 22 of Daniel chapter 3, he says, Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even the very men that were taking them to the furnace... They were killed because the heat that was coming out of that furnace was so strong that it consumed the, the, the soldiers that was taking them to the furnace. In fact, that's where the miracle really began. That's where the miracle really began. But this was no joke. Just instead just, just you thought, well, this was just a little fire. No, this fire was so hot that even as they approached the furnace, the men that were taking them to the furnace dropped dead. Sometimes when the enemy is operating and the enemy is trying to get you, he's trying to destroy you, he doesn't have any problems destroying a whole lot of people around you just to be able to get to you. Do you understand me? And that's why when we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus, when we stand in the authority of the word, when we are able to say, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, the shield of protection comes upon us right and so here so that even your enemies who tried to destroy you they themselves will be destroyed and he goes I wrote, I wrote here on the on my notes enduring faith what are we talking about that faith 
that will last through the trials. You know when you have enduring faith, when your faith has the ability to carry you through whatever trials that come into your life. Husbands, do you have enduring faith? Wives, do you have enduring faith? Kids, do you have enduring faith? Singles and single adults, do you have enduring faith? Single parents and and seniors and, and all those that are part of the body, do you have enduring faith? Because enduring faith will take you through every trial, every storm of life, and every fire that comes into your life. Enduring faith. He said, enduring faith, faith that will last through the trials of your life must go through, here, here, here I want you to write this down, must go through the refiner's fire. Can, can I just say this for all of us? If you live long enough as a Christian, and some of you have lived long enough, you can testify that God will never let you get to heaven without your faith being refined. Do you understand me? And, and let me just say this. You may say, well, pastor, I'm going through nothing right now. Uh, life is good. I'm, I'm growing and bound, leaps and bounds. I'm, I'm prospering and all this and everything seems to be going right. Hold on one minute. Just give it a few more years. Give it a few more months. Pastor, are you trying to cause something on me? No, because every faith, go all through the word of God, every faith has to be refined. Has to be refined. And so the reality of it is that uh, enduring faith that takes you through all of this, all these trials, that enduring faith has been refined by fire. If you admire Christians in the body of Christ, if you admire the men and women of God that seem to be strong and adamant and, com- uh, and full of conviction and passion and tenacity, if you admire those kind of people, go up and ask them to tell you their story. Let them tell you their story. And I will guarantee you that if you find a man or woman of God that has strong, enduring faith, it is because they have gone through something. And because they have gone through something, they walked with God through the fire. They walked with God through the storms. They were, they were able to see God in the midst of a storm. When you are in a storm and you can see God in your storm, that is powerful. That is powerful. That, my friends, will change your life forever. And that's my encouragement to you. I want people to go through storms. I want people that come to Freedom Chapel to go through fire. I want people to go through water that over, 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 almost wants to overflow over you. Why? Because the moment you go through that with the Spirit of God, Your life will never be the same. You will never be an artificial Christian. You will never be an imitator. No, you will be the real deal. Why? You've experienced him. And he has given you a story that nobody can take from you that has penetrated your heart because it's your story and you have walked through it. That's what happened to the disciples. The the apostles, the Christians of the early church, they had experience with God in such a way that nothing could move them. They were unshakable. They were unmovable. They were uh, 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 convinced. They were convinced. And if we're living in this 21st century where everything is shaking and everything is changing and people's values are changing, you and I have got to have some conviction. Do you stand for everything, for anything? Do you believe for anything? These are the days. We were talking last night uh, uh, or the night before uh, uh, about uh, Christians having a, 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 a cruise line mentality. You know what a cruise line mentality is? A cruise line. What do, what do they do on the cruise line? They pamper you. They tickle you. They feed you. They give you goodies and all these things. They give you Wi-Fi and, and free this and free that. And, 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 and some of us as Christians, we have this uh, 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 cruise line of mentality. I want to encourage you as we go forward, what you and I should be having is a battleship mentality. A battleship 
mentality, a war mentality, because I don't know whether you know it or not, but we are in a war. A battleship mentality where I'm not coming to be served, I want to serve. I'm not coming to, to just float around. No, I want to stand my ground and be on the battlefield. I want to be with my brothers and my sisters in arms, and I want to stand on the wall and say, enough is enough. This won't happen on my watch. A battlefield mentality, a battleship mentality. Hmm. So enduring faith will go, we'll go through the refiner's fire. And I wrote in my notes here, when you go through the refining fire, a couple of things will happen. Number one, when you and I go through the refining fire, it will purge your motives. Why do you do the things you do? Is, are your motives pure? Or is there a cynical reason why you're in the kingdom of God? When you go through the refiner's fire, it purges your motives, number one. Number two, it purges your vision. Is your vision all about you or do you want God's vision for your life? When you go through the refiner's fire, not only does it purge your motivations, but it will purge your vision so that you get God's vision for your life and not your own. Right? And there's a reason why I'm saying that, that you need God's vision and not your own. I'll let you know in a few minutes. But when you go through the, uh, 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 the refiner's fire, number one, it purges your motives. Number two, it purges your vision. And number three, it purges your dreams. It's not about you. Do you know that this walk with Christ is not about you? Do you know it's not about you? Has anybody told you re- lately that the walk you, are, you and I are walking is not about you? You are not the center of the universe. Christ is. But sometimes we, we, we behave like we are the center of everything. Uh, it makes me smile when, when, when something happens in America and, and people say, wow, Jesus must be coming back any minute now. No, he's not coming back. If Jesus was coming back, he would, he would have come back a long time ago because of the suffering around the world. Not because America goes through a vaccination or a COVID virus or goes through a snowstorm or goes through anything. No, there are hell that people are going through around the world. And if it was time for Christ to come, he would have come because of them, not because of us. And so when we and I go through the refiner's fire, what does it do? It purges our motivation. It purges our vision. It purges our dreams, and then one more, it purges our purposes. All of a sudden now, you have a new purpose in life. All of a sudden now, you have a new dream. All of a sudden now, you have new vision. All of a sudden now, there's new motivation that inspires you to go for the kingdom of God. And that is what happens when you go through a refiner's fire. That's why I say to every one of us that are watching this morning, you and I will go through the fire. Some of us have gone through two or three refining fires. Why? Because there were some things in our lives that God didn't get rid God was not able to get rid of the first time because why? We protected a certain area of our lives and we said, God, you can have all the other areas of my life, but this area of my life, I want to stay in control of it. And as long as there's an area in your life where you want to stay in control, God will still have to take you through a refiner's fire. Because by the time you get out of a refiner's fire, there should be nothing of you and all of Jesus. It was John the Baptist said that I must decrease so that he must increase. That's the heart of a a man or woman of God that has been going through the refiner's fire. And then I wrote down at, at the bottom of my notes here, it says, when you have finally allowed God to purge you, he can then use uh, he can then use you for his glory. God will protect his vision, his dream, and his purpose that he has placed 
in your heart. Let me read, let me say that again. God will protect, if you, if you allow God to take you through the refiner's fire, I wrote here, God will protect his vision in you. He will protect his dream that he's placed in you, and he will protect his purpose that he's placed in your heart. Go back to Daniel chapter 3. Look at verse 25. Because a lot of times people think, well, the, the, why did God intervene in Shadrach, in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, why didn't God just let them die? Why? Because God had put in them a purpose, God had put in them a vision, and God had put in them a dream. And until you have fulfilled the purpose for God for your life, you are not dying and going anywhere. Notice what happens there. So let's read verse 24. Daniel chapter 3, verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. You ready? Then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Now, focusing on verse 25. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hmm. Can, I, can I just say this? Any time that you and I are able to tap into the, the, the vision of God, the dream of God, and the purpose of God, hear this, and someone tries to destroy that, the fourth man will always show up in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not go home. I'm going to declare it this morning to you. You will not go home until you have fulfilled the purposes of God, the vision of God, and the dreams of God for your life. And because they tried to, because Nebuchadnezzar tried to extinguish the vision of purpose and dream that God had put into Nebuchadnezzar, uh, that God had put into Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God intervened. Why? Because their time and their purpose was not over. You're still alive. You're still alive. Why? Have you ever asked yourself the question, why am I still alive? It, could it be that God has still a purpose for you? Could it be that he still wants to give you visions and dreams? Could it be that God is not finished with you? Because if he was finished with you, you'd be going home. Nebuchadnezzar thought he could derail the plan of God. He thought he was God. He thought he was full of it. And he thought he was in control. And Nebuchadnezzar really finds out that he was never in control. And anything he did was because God allowed him to do it. And, and why? So that God can be glorified and God can be shown off in the earth through the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so I wrote there, the fourth man will always show up in your life when your purpose and your vision and your dreams are not completed. Can you take courage in that? Can you take, can, does that excite you? Does that excite you? As we go through the 21 days of fasting and praying, this is week three of our fast. This is the last week of our fast. I want you to press in and I want you to press in strong. Why? Because God wants to give you a vision. God wants to give you a dream. God wants to put new purpose in your life. Why? And that purpose will not be snuffed out by nobody, not your boss, not your uh, employers, not the, the, the government. Nobody can snuff out the plan of God. And if they try, believe it or not, the fourth man will show up so that you can complete your assignment before you go home. That's why I'm so excited. That's why I have settled the death issue. Why? I know I'm not going anywhere until my assignment is finished. And so we're focused on our assignment. We are focused on our vision. We are focused on, uh, 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 um, on our dreams. Why? Because we're allowing God to use us. We're, we're dying and being refined. We are God, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to refine your motives, to refine those dreams, to refine those purposes, to refine those visions, so that it's all Jesus 
and none of us. All Jesus and none of us. Nebuchadnezzar at the end there in verse 26, it, then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire and the sapphires, the administrators, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and they saw these men whose bodies uh, the fire had no power, whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were the garments affected, and the smell and the smell of fire was not on them. Nothing touched them. And I will say to you, nothing will touch you when you have already allowed the fire of the Holy Spirit to refine you. They come out of that, and, and, and they are already walking in the power of God and all because why when the fourth man showed up he loosed them he set them free and not one of them was hurt it reminds me of Luke 10 19 Ooh, we're coming I gotta land this ship I land this plane Luke 10 19 he says I will walk upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing nothing will harm you I want to encourage you for a few minutes. Let's go into a time of worship. Let's go into the time of worship where we, we sit in the presence of God. We're going to bring the worship team back up now, and they're going to come and worship the, the Lord. And, and I want you to take these few minutes to worship Him. And then we'll come back and, and we'll close up uh, for, the, for the morning. And, um, but let's go to a time of worship right now.
are you sensing the power of God? I, 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 has these two weeks been such a revolutionary time that as you have fasted and prayed, your sensitivity to the things of God, to the Spirit of God, uh, uh, your sensitivity to the Word of God, has it enlightened? Has it grown? Are you starting to sense the Spirit of God moving on the inside? Are you sensing that the, the refining fire of the Holy Spirit? Are you sensing that He's purging you and refining you? He's refining your motives. Is He, is he refining your purpose? Is He refining your vision and your dream? Are you finding more and more that you are seeking Him with, a, the, with the right motives? And so I want to pray for you. Because this last week of our fast and prayer, this is when the enemy will throw everything at you. Because he's seen how you've been faithful in week one. He's seen how, you, how you've been faithful in week two. And he's, he's coming after you in week three. Because he wants to derail you. He wants to get you into some foolish argument and foolish dis, 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 uh, discussions. He want, my wife has, has been telling me over and over this, these last two weeks when I want to say something. She said, don't, get into any, don't start any foolish argument with me. <laughs> That's my wife, that African woman, yes. She tells me, don't get into any foolish argument with me. And I, and I got to shut my mouth, because why? I got to practice what I preach. And so I want to encourage you, press in, full force, leave nothing on the field. By the time you get to us next Sunday, you should be exhausted physically, but you should be powerful in the power and the anointing of God. When we get back here next Sunday, man, worship should be dynamite. The Word should be exalting and you should be bursting with pride, bursting with an energy that the Spirit of God has, in, has ignited in your spirit. Because why? You have died to the flesh, but your spirit is strong. And so when we gather together next Sunday, that when we come to this place of worship, come with an expectation. An expectation. And let's come and magnify Him and thank Him for what He did in our 21 days of fasting and praying. We love you. We're glad you're home today safe. Spend a few minutes afterwards and just pray and, and commune together and meditate on that word. And then go ahead and have a marvelous Sunday. And we'll see you back here next Sunday at the same time, 10.30 on YouTube. Don't forget, we'll be meeting tonight. Right after, we'll meet tonight, Sunday night. We'll be meeting at 7.30 tonight. I come on at 7.20. So come on at 7.20. You can say hi to the folks. And then we get to, into our devotion and prayer at 7.30. We go from 7.30 to 8. No later, no later than 8. Uh, so that you can put your kitties to bed, all right? God bless you. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a smashing day.